Boys Club. Is it called Boys Club because my apartment looks like a boy lives in it? I wouldn't say a boy lives in it. I would say a boy is kidnapped somewhere in here. Boys Club. We're everything. We're true crime. We're, we're world true, star hip hop. We're world star hip hop. We're Netflix reviews. Stories of the day. Boys Club. Listen. Yeah, do it. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. Uh, I think. Uh, no, we're not. And on Google Play. Nobody gives a shit. Boys Club. Boys Club Podcast. Now with 90% more sound clips of black people. Boys Club. Touch me and I'll sue you. Here at Intoxia Reviews, we intellectually dissect the art of cinema scene by scene. Here's some clips. All oh, he is, it's just a fucking big wooden doll full of cum chasing kids around. <laughs> you look up guys who poop in a bag. I think that's where you'll find him. Because he is hurt. It's probably just in your search history anyway, isn't it? <laughs> this movie fucking blows. So don't forget to subscribe to Intoxicated Reviews on all places you find podcasts. Except Spotify. We're working on it. Do not take product if you are hyp- hypersensitive. And welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah, and if you are new to Intoxicated, this is a drinking comedy podcast where I have friends on, we have a couple drinks, and we talk about life. I'm super excited this week to have a returning guest on the podcast. I welcome back Moxie Munchies, who is a second time returning guest. Her last episode was episode 78, back in September, where we talked about her YouTube channel, which is Moxie Munchies, which is a really fun YouTube channel where she does a lot of cool stuff with food. But Moxie has a new project out. She has a podcast with her friend May called We Started a Cult. And what the podcast is about is all about spreading positivity and love so that you get that back to you. And this is really weird because right now I'm in a really shitty time in my life and I'm feeling super negative about everything. So it's kind of ironic that this week I'm releasing this episode, but at the same time, kind of cool in a way to sit down and talk to Moxie and and try to get some positivity back into my life because, oh my gosh, do I need it. Um, so on this episode with Moxie, we talked about the podcast. We talked about the idea of spreading positivity and putting love out there in the world so that you get it back to you. But at the same time, we did also talk about the struggles of that and the struggles of trying to maintain that mentality while you are actually dealing with like something like seasonal depression, which we are both going through. So it was a very honest conversation about depression and how Moxie has been dealing with that. And I mentioned in the episode that I do look up to Moxie in a lot of ways. I do super respect what she does. She has a lot of side hustles. She works full time. She stays consistent and she stays positive, which is rare these days. We are living in a dark time in 2018. Um, It feels like there's a lot of negativity everywhere. So it's super cool what her and May are doing with We Started a Cult. You can subscribe to that wherever you find podcasts under We Started a Cult and you can follow them on social media. Their handle on Instagram is Euphorolytic, which, ooh, can't believe I said that right. I did not think I would. That is spelled E-U-P-H-O-R-A-L-Y-T-I-C, Euphorolytic. And that is the same for Twitter and Facebook as well. So definitely give them a follow and check out what they are doing. It is super duper cool. Always awesome to have Moxie on. I have a feeling she will be a regular now. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It was a good one. I think I truly needed to have this conversation. I came around at a good time in my life when I kind of needed a little pick me up. So big thanks to Moxie for coming on. We did also talk about Moxie's other side hustle, which is Elope Halifax, which is super duper cool. She provides packages to couples wanting to do elopements or really small weddings. It's a super cool business. So we also talk about that. Do make sure to also check out Moxie's YouTube channel. So that is Moxie Munchies on YouTube and also social media, Instagram and all that. Multiple places you can find this awesome lady. And do make sure, of course, that you are subscribed to Intoxicated wherever you find podcasts. We are on Apple Podcasts. 
Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, any app for Android or iPhone. You can follow the podcast on social media. That is Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast and on Twitter at in underscore toxicated. Shoot me an email as well at our Gmail account. That is intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com. And check out our Patreon page. We are on Patreon. And speaking of negativity, I just recorded a audio diary that I will be posting very soon for Patreons. The audio diaries are available at the $3 level on Patreon. And in that audio diary, I go into all the stuff that's bringing me down lately. So taking a hard left turn from this really awesome positive episode into a full-on rant fest but I mean sometimes you got to do that got to get that energy out as long as you turn it around into positivity which I hope to do that is patreon.com backslash intoxicated we have various reward levels on there if you are interested in signing up and as always if you're enjoying the show the best thing you can do is tell a friend so definitely let your friends know about intoxicated and spread the love I don't know why I sounded so goofy there it is 3 a.m. and I actually have been drinking whiskey. Um, I think this is the first time ever maybe that I'm a little bit drunk for this intro. Oh well. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this episode with the very awesome Moxie. So we are rolling on the Intoxicated Podcast mm. and I'm super excited to have a returning guest. Hello. You're now, <laughs> you're now a regular because you've done two. Is that is that your quantifier for regular? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's Moxie. Yay. Hi. Welcome back, Moxie. Thank you. How is it going? It's going pretty good. I'm excited to be in comfortable pants today. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love your sweatshirt. Oh, your sweatshirt thank you. is beyond amazing. As you can tell, I dressed up for you my uh, <laughs> pizza and T Rex hoodie. Very, very classy of me. I love it. It's very Moxie. I was actually featured in the Wall Street Journal in the show. Oh my God, yes, you were. You're famous. I have that on my Instagram profile right now because I find it so hilarious. That is un. So, did you know they were doing that? Or was it. Sort of. So, uh, at work, they were like, oh, we need some stock pictures to send. And we were interviewed for this uh, article with the Wall Street Journal. And. So I popped in, but obviously I couldn't just smile nice that I had to do this ridiculous smile with like, I ah, look at me open mouth. And of course, that's the shot that they, <laughs> Wall Street Journal thought was appropriate. So. It's very you. Yeah. And I don't dress like that at work normally. It was a potluck day and I thought a hoodie with pizza slices falling into a T-Rex's mouth was very potluck appropriate. <laughs> So, I love it. I'm a very professional business lady. Oh, hell yeah, you are. <laughs> um, so this is your second time. We, I'm drinking some, some chain yard frostbite cider. Mm-hmm. It's like their holiday cider, which they told me they're like, you can drink this warm or cold. I was like, ooh, bitch. Actually, I'm not a big cider fan, but I might be down with warm. Mm. Yeah. And it's very, very good. Mm-hmm. It's very crisp. And you're drinking Perrier because you yeah. you you drove a scooter over here and I'm not about to. Yeah, make, no, yeah, I yeah, go yeah. for the zero blood alcohol level if I'm scooting somewhere because there's not a metal cage around me. Oh, my God. To protect me. I was going to say, like, that seems nerve wracking driving one of those. You definitely get used to it. Yeah. Uh, I've had my scooter for nine years. Oh, wow. Um, and I bought a used too, so it's an older one. Um, you get used to it, and I definitely only drive. Uh, there's rules to it, like I won't drive mostly at night, right? Um, but That's you get fair. used to it. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit! I mean, it's faster than the bus, and it's cheaper than the bus. Fuck the bus. <laughs> Fuck the bus. Oh, there's gonna and be. It's, it's I'm gonna be cursing away. You're you're pretty family friendly. But Me? I'm, I'm well, going to be my cursing. channel is, my podcast isn't, but um, it's it's actually faster than a car a lot of times because I find getting out of the city at the end of the day, a lot of times you live in the city too, you know there's like always two lanes, one lane is full of parked cars, Yeah. Well, usually I can still get through that like oh, lane and cars. Oh, you scoot on by them. Yeah. So I get to jump traffic a lot actually. That is, yeah. that's amazing. It's great. That's, did you used to take the ferry? Or do you sometimes take the ferry? No, where I live, it's actually faster to take the bus. Oh, fair. So I can I can actually hop on one bus and be downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, so the odd day I'll take the ferry, but I have to bus it to the ferry and then take the ferry. Right. If I lived maybe like a 20-minute walk closer to the ferry, it'd be worth it. But it's, it's probably like a good 45-minute walk to the ferry. Mm. And I can be at work. 
right in 45 minutes so freaking commuting man Ugh. yeah yeah it's, it's it's no fun but you mentioned podcast yeah this is super super cool i had no idea you were starting a podcast until you were like i have a podcast <laughs> yeah, i think i might have mentioned to you in passing last time i was here but my friend and i've been working on the idea for probably eight months we finally just got around to like getting everything together and now we're in the good situation where we are able to record every week and then put it out regularly amazing yes so tell us all about it so it's called so we started a cult shrug Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and uh it's with my friend may wonderful and i and we do a weekly podcast about our spiritual movement and the reason we started is her and i had uh, some lengthy discussions about how we both feel we have something in us that we need to share with everyone else. And it's just about um, how when you give love out, you get love back, back. exponentially. Mm-hmm. And it kind of puts you in a happy, awesome, euphoric state. So this giving out creates a catalytic conversion and makes you euphorolytic in feeling and feeling happy and just trying to share that with the world and euphorolytic euphorolytic it such makes a you word euphorolytic such a word mm-hmm. it's a lot yeah but we struggled to find another word to describe how it's like a catalyst but then you're also like getting this feeling out of and out i of think it. personally you picked a perfect time to put this out because it's winter it's people brutal. are feeling down the yeah. holidays like oddly enough make everyone really like depressed maybe not everybody but a lot of people get down over the holidays because they're reminded of all the things they don't have in their lives people material things that sort of thing yeah it's it's like pushing buying stuff down our throats and the holidays start in september now yeah it's ridiculous it's It's ridiculous it's it's uh, i just like I'm not into Christmas anymore. It's just too, it's just too much stress, I feel. Although our family did go gift free now. Amazing. So we don't have to worry about gifts. Yeah. So oddly enough, like I've been thinking about this because I've been listening to your show, uh, which is funny because I'm the most negative person in the universe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very negative. But I've been thinking a lot lately. I'm like, okay, I don't really have to buy any gifts, but like how cool would it be to like just maybe like take you know how everyone treats themselves around Christmas? They're like, I'm going to buy that $50 bottle of lotion for myself. Or whatever, yeah. I've thought about it. I'm like, maybe what I'll do instead is like just make a charity donation. Like it might not be a lot of money, but like take whatever I would have usually bought myself yeah. and just make and a give, donation. And one year, actually, my family still has gifts, but we go pretty low key in a very small circle. Um you can also just buy like chickens and cows and stuff and, yes! and give them to your friends. Like they'll give you a card to like show your friends like, oh, I bought you a chicken. They're going to be on behalf mm-hmm. of you. It's kind of bunk, but it's at least <laughs> puts it if you're going to donate money anyway, which is usually where my mindset is. It, yeah. It puts it in the mind of others where you're like, look, I it, bought you a chicken. It gives and them makes f- them think. And it gives them something physical to see to be like, oh, yeah, that's where my money's going. As opposed to like just giving a donation where you get a receipt. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay, guess I gave money. No idea where that money, what, what's being done with that money. Obviously, do your research, like, and figure out what charity you want to give to. But I, you're right. I think that's a great way to do it. We did that for my mom one year. We got her a goat. Yeah. And was like, this goat is going to be used for milk, like, somewhere. <laughs> and she was so just like, oh. Okay. Yeah. I was so I was so hyped up about it and my whole family was just like, "Oh, mm, thanks." <laughs> I'm like, clearly it's not that they wanted the gift per se, they just weren't jazzed about it like I was. Not totally jazzed. Yeah. But it's just like I feel like gifts should be more like that. Um, I just feel like we're too wrapped up in like buying. I would love to things. I know, and I just I don't need anything. I'd hazard most people in my family don't need anything. This year yeah. I did actually say I would like one of those USB plug in <laughs> warmers that you put your coffee mug on <gasps> at work. That, and then that way your mug stays warm because I sit my coffee really soft. Oh, that, my that is God. one thing I was like, I would love one of those. But 
to be honest, I could just buy one for $10 now, but I thought there, there's something that my yeah. nephews or whatever, they can go and buy me for right. Christmas. Right. It's easy. It's like trying to find things that people can buy me for Christmas. It's so stupid. I don't need anything. Yeah. I purged half my house this year and just don't Ooh. want clutter in my house. Oh, that's. I feel so much better. I need to do that. I have oh, my I'll closets. I'll do are... it for you. Really? <laughs> so if, if I, okay, are you saying that if I like ordered us pizza? Your I'm, heart just, I will take hours, but you just have to have your heart open. Oh, my to heart's purge. open. I and have, when you look at like an item, be like, no, and just purge it. What are your thoughts? Okay, so what do you do with the stuff? Do you sell it? Do you sell, give it away? Most of it's Salvation Army. And in the yeah. past, I've been good at selling things. But this time, I just thought I can't have any time between when I decide to get rid of it and getting rid of it because then I might back out of it. So, That's exactly what yeah. happens. Yeah. You just like, you need to like, you need to do the thing. You just need to get it out of your house. Yeah. But the big thing too is probably about a year and a half ago, I started working really hard at stop buying things too. How do you do that? You don't go to stores. Stop going to stores. You don't yeah. need anything. Stores usually, and even this weekend, I almost got sucked into it yesterday I depressed sitting around not doing anything which I actually mm. loved but at the same time I was, <laughs> <laughs> at the same time I was like I should go to the mall and walk yeah. around first mistake <laughs> and then I said nope and didn't do it and just stayed home I was literally talking about this at brunch a couple hours ago with my friend but like I live so close to the mall I go there for supper sometimes. Like, I, I just go there a lot. Yeah. And you're totally correct. When I go in there now, I have blinders on. And, yeah, it's like everyone talks about sales and how awesome the holiday sales are. And I'm like, yeah, but if you take advantage of every single sale, you're going to spend so much money. Or you're just going to spend money you wouldn't have otherwise spent. Yeah. You'll look at a thing and be like, oh, I might use this, like, maybe once a year. Might as well get it now that it's 30%. And it's just like, it, it is so easy. Yeah, it is so easy. And so it's I've been doing the same thing. I've been avoiding them all. And when I do go in, I try to be like a horse with blinders and I just don't look. I'm Except sure. for the like nine candles you bought a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was only six, by the way. I'm sorry. And he's going to last all winter. Six. And I lit a fresh one for you. Yeah. It's the peppermint brownie. I'm actually allergic to fragrance. Are you serious? <laughs> Should we blow it out? Oh my god! Moxie! Are you seriously? And cats. <laughs> this is a death trap for you. It's fine. I'll live my life. My cat life. does. It's only a couple so. hours. Oh my gosh. That's um, hilarious. So but, you must hate a store like Bath and Body Works. Oh, we don't go in them. Yeah. I don't go any of those stores. Yeah. But I, I honestly, the, I'm the same. I live near ish to the mall, a little further than you, but not much to yeah. Mac. And I just don't go, especially I find like stores like Winners and TJ Maxx and all that. You're like, oh, I'm just going to go see what there is. And then yeah. you get sucked into spending 20 to $100. <sighs> That's so true. And it was just a point where like, I don't have money to spend the precious money I had. I wanted to buy on gear for YouTube. Yeah. And, my, and I'm like, this isn't how I want to spend my money. If I only have $50, is this what I want to spend the $50 You want to put it into something that's actually going to like yield something exactly. productive in your yeah. life. If I have the fifty dollars, which a lot of times I didn't have money to just burn, I had other right. obligations, right? So yeah, but you stop buying and then you purge, and it feels so. Amazing. I need to purge so bad. I got like garbage bags full of clothes just yeah. stuffed in my closet that I'm like, I'm gonna get rid of these at some point, and then they just stay in my closet. And it is harder without a car. <sighs> That's the thing. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna have to chalk out a day and like book someone with a car. To, like, yeah. help me bring this stuff. Although I think my apartment does do, like, Boys and Girls Club. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. I'll have to find out when they do that. Because mm -hmm. then I could just, like, leave it here. But it's just, like, these little things that we can do to make ourselves feel better. Which, one thing we want to talk about is the seasonal depression side of things. Your podcast is coming out at a great time. Because I'm in such a negative headspace. Yeah. So when I listen to you guys being more positive and just talking about giving and, and all this. It does make me feel better. What inspired you to finally do this and spread? I don't know. So it. to be honest, when we were talking about this in the early iterations, I just wanted to start a call. <laughs> um, I didn't really care about it, but her and I have both kind of had our own 
personal journeys the past, say, like two to three years that yeah. we're both much more empathetic and try to get away from like hating things and that sort of thing. So we didn't necessarily want to start like a negative thing or something that would suck people in and not give anything to them. Right. Um, but then she came up with kind of this idea of this is the direction we go with our feelings i guess right and um yeah we just rolled with that and it seems to really work and it's funny because we have some people a guy commented this week he's like i thought this is satire but now i'm really into it (laughs) because she's kind of in the comedy realm of where she lives i love it and i was like well you know what there is something to be said about thinking positively and then you notice more positive things in your lives. And 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 giving. And, and giving. Yeah. 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 And just having empathy and realizing that everybody out there is just like you and needs someone to love them too. It's so true. And yeah. I'm seeing it so much this time of year. Yeah. Because everyone is feeling really worn down, depressed, energies depleted. And like I have it, my struggle is is that sometimes when this happens with friends reaching out to me being like I'm really sad and depressed. I don't know what to do. And life's crashing in on me. And and I've been struggling lately because I'm like, I want to help you, but I also need help. So it's this weird, like, thing of... say that? Because no one says that stuff to me. Really? No. I watch your Instagram stories and I want to come mother you. Like... (laughs) I'm up at, like, 5.30, exercising, eating right, and you were up, like, two hours ago, and I'm like, oh, my God, she needs to go to sleep. Yeah. Oh my God, she needs to. Not- <laughs> it's it's my energy has been. I mean, I've always been a night owl, but in right now, I'm in this vicious cycle of. I'm just always tired, like no matter what I do. Yeah, but uh, when was the last time you slept eight hours a night for a solid two weeks and got caught up? Oh, a solid two weeks, never. <laughs> because you don't you don't catch up in a day. It's a slow catch up, eh? That's the signs of sleep. Yeah. But my struggle is, is that when I get home from work, I hit an energy low. And if I'm at all horizontal on any surface, I will fall asleep. Oh, so you're napping after I'm work. napping. And so oh. then I actually get peak energy around 10 or 11. Because you have a na- you're in that vicious nap cycle. And yeah. so then I don't get enough sleep. So then I'm tired through the day again. And then I nap. So like I have friends always telling me like, just pull an all night or some night and exhaust yourself. So that like... Or not maybe maybe not an all nighter, but like suffer through an an evening yeah, without you napping. Can't nap. Yeah, I don't and go nap. to bed at goddamn eleven o'clock. I, I can't nap because I will not sleep at night. Yeah. yeah, it's it's. But it's tough to break the cycle for sure. It's tough to break the cycle when you are depressed. It's tough to break the cycle anytime, at, anytime, let alone when you're depressed, and let alone like when it's dark at five p.m. and you get home and you're like, it's dark. Do you sleep. think you're depressed, or do you think your anxiety has exhausted you? good question i think it's like a little bit of both to be honest because i i i didn't i was insanely anxious most of my life not realizing that was a thing that was not depression i guess and just realize now like i'm anxious and right and then work towards removing that but also i in the fall in that i just become listless in that too see i think for me right now it's more depression because my stress is manifesting in i don't care so in other words, if I'm in a stressful situation at work or something, like say things are overwhelming and stressful at work, I'm just like, mm. oh, well, yeah, I'm just absolutely can't wait to go home and eat chips unmotivated. Yeah. yeah. And all the stress is internalized and it's not coming out in the form of panic attacks or um, freak outs. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's actually just coming out in me shutting down completely. Um, and also to creative roadblocks. I've just been finding myself uninspired lately. That's my problem. Well, I mean, I had a really, really busy year too, but that's my problem too. That it's more like way things, not the podcast says this is like new and fresh and yeah, you're in the honeymoon stage, but my videos just the past couple months, I'm like, Oh, I need to shoot that. And it's, it's more of a burden than a joy. Right. But then once I get doing it, I'm like, like Oh, right. I love this. But it's getting yourself to that point. It's getting yourself to do it. And coming up with new ideas. It's hard. Yeah. I described it as like listless. Like I don't want to do anything. Yeah. And I want to do everything, but I just can't push myself to do it. Mine's definitely tied to fall, it getting darker and all of mine's definitely tied to that. Not necessarily the holidays. The holidays definitely affect people. I know, but mine's more like starts in October 
kind of creeps up can't wake up in the morning even have sleep and then <sighs> and then just you don't want to get out of bed and do oh anything I, you're speaking my language this like has been my life it's hibernation yeah yes and like i'm such a social person i love being social and i love socializing and i love doing things and i'm an extrovert so like when i when i'm going through these lows i'm just like this doesn't seem like sarah like wh- where is she where'd mm. she go so it's like tricky and um I want to know your tips on how to deal with it. But what I've discovered is what I've started doing is giving myself really simple goals every day. So like, yeah. And this people are going to laugh, but like mega simple, like do you do the dishes in your sink, shower, wash your makeup brushes. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's very actually meditative for me. I love washing makeup brushes. <laughs> brush, shower. Yeah. Brush my teeth. Yeah. yeah. Simple little things that like, yeah, it might not have this great impact, but doing something every day is so important to me because I hate the days that I do nothing I actually feel like I'm wasting away life I have to be productive to have value in myself I can't just sit and watch Netflix all day no. that's not fun for me yeah and yeah most of the day is cool but do do <laughs> do one thing you know do I need to be doing things. something right? yeah yeah totally so yeah. what how do you I mean, I've been working on it for a few years. I don't know if I always had it or if it just started in mid-20s or if I just realized it in my mid-20s. But I kind of have a multi-pronged approach. So I have a sad light, which (gasps) you can get those at Costco for under 60 bucks. Oh, seriously? Yeah. So how do you use it? You (laughs) sit under it in the morning? So you have to use it like 10, 20 minutes a day. So... I have it at work, so when I go in in the at work in the morning, you the the Costco cheaper ones, only the highest setting is scientifically effective and close to your face. So, I just have it like, think of it like a KD box, like a Kraft Dinner mac and cheese box, but that size, oh. and I hold it like a blinder beside me because you don't have to look into it; it just has to be like hitting your eyes. So then I just sit like this with it Whoa. beside me like a horse blinder for twenty minutes holy shit and it's not like oh I suddenly feel great it's a thing that definitely helps over time and I find that at least wakes me up a little bit more in the morning that yeah. you're really sluggish and then the bright light your body's just like oh daytime because remind me again are you not into coffee or are you I love coffee but I'm off caffeine because right. I can't sleep my sleep is I destroyed my sleep when I was younger. So now I don't drink caffeine for about two and a half years. And oh, I find it makes a huge difference. So okay. I still drink decaf, but no, I don't have caffeine in the morning. Right. So this light is kind of your coffee. But does the coffee actually help you in the morning? So I, science says it's not, by I the way. I switched to, oddly enough, people always talk about the different roasts and how much caffeine is mm-hmm. in them. I didn't like the taste of me- Keurig. Uh, medium roast coffee so I switched to dark which has less caffeine it definitely does um I don't know but I do know is it's the routine yeah and that's and it's a, the and warm it's the warm beverage it's like, a warm it, hug which it, I still do I still yeah. drink something warm in the morning like a tea or coffee or even a glass of hot water right. I still do that right and it's like part of one thing I'll say is I do notice when I don't take caffeine like when I if I ever have a day where I skip coffees mm-hmm. um I'm just tired as fuck so <laughs> this the, i the, i i swear all of my friends are probably so sick of me saying this but if you look at what caffeine actually does to the body that tiredness is actually a withdrawal symptom of the caffeine not actual tiredness yeah so it's it's insane it's we're insane. all freaking crazy anyway i um, know and then you get the and then there's days where i'll over caffeinate and i'll get the caffeine crash which is Death. that's just like makes you feel terrible yeah and i it happens to me so much easier now since i don't have daily caffeine but god damn but yeah i do the light and then also like it's so bad but it's so true daily exercise and eating right i know it's such a simple easy thing to say but yeah you're totally right like i can't it takes more work to do that to me than like a giant month long project at work like it takes yeah. so much work for me to eat a salad when I'm kind of out of that cycle of it but mm. eating right and exercising really does help it really does everyone's you think it doesn't people talk about medication and that but try that first it takes time but it really does help. I think and it's establishing the routine that is the tricky part with that possibly yeah because yeah. for me 
my currency is time and the time it takes to cook is too much in my life. For whatever reason, but eating healthy doesn't necessarily mean you're cooking anymore either. It's true. I could just you change just my buy ta- a giant change. Salad. Yeah, change what I buy for takeout. Really, exactly. That's tricky though. Ugh, I just don't like when I eat a salad. I don't feel fulfilled at all. You need to get some protein in your salad then, I or know. it's mental, which is my problem too. I'm like, ugh, <laughs> lettuce. Hate- this wasted a meal on lettuce. Why did I do that? I just hate salads so much. No, they're the worst. So another question about the depression side. Do you find yourself more emotional? Do you cry a lot when you're depressed? I don't know. I don't know if mine's necessarily like classic depression or just like listlessness and lack of motivation. Right. But I'm in my 30s and I cry way more all the time now. So it's kind of hard to tell. (laughs) I cry so much. The new WestJet commercial for Christmas is out Uh this morning. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, I was Uh a ballin' and it wasn't even good this year. Can you give me... uh, What's the premise? Uh, So it was three canadian pods of people family or whatever that all seem to live in the uk and then they surprise their family members from different parts of the world so one girl one an older couple their daughter was there from seoul someone met their boyfriend at that um country concert in vegas the sh- the one that got oh, shot up oh shit and they flew him to see her and stuff like that so it was oh. good but their premise this year is like around the world since they're expanding their, their right. reach and then they have like deals every day or whatever but it's Ugh. not like when they went to that village and oh <laughs> the dominican and so anyway yes i cry at everything anyway um right so i don't know i don't maybe but generally i'm pretty emotional about things anyway same <laughs> yeah and it's not Big like crier. if i cry about something I'm like my day is ruining them down it's just water coming out of your eyes because you feel it it's an exfoliation of your insides <laughs> just get it out getting the excess liquid out so like are you a- okay you're a very positive person i try to be and i wasn't obvious- always obviously you have the podcast about positivity and love and um how do you deal with anger because we all get it um I have been thinking about this a lot lately because in particular, (laughs) don't want to make this a feminist thing, but in particular, guys uh, or males, like they internalize a lot of their anger. Um, I I know a lot of people who just refuse to admit they're angry when they're clearly angry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that terrifies me a bit. (laughs) That's not to say like you should be like, I'm angry about everything all the time. But like I take the approach of like, I like getting it out because then I can breathe a deep breath and get on with my life. Well, you don't have to scream out. You just be like, I'm frustrated about X or Y. Ex- just expressing exactly. the feeling. Exactly. Like ad- yeah. acknowledging that the feeling is there. Yeah. Um, But like, I know that as pessimists, which I am, it's so easy to dwell on that. Like to stay in that space. Yeah, for sure. And like stay there. Cause like it's everything sucks and na 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 na. How the hell do you do? De- like when you have a really bad day or when you're dealing with something that makes you really angry how do you how do you deal with that so may and i the person i do my best here i do the podcast with we were actually i mean we've known each other since we were 15 we were actually super i don't know if we'd say pessimistic but like super cynical people yeah um like very hateful laugh at people type person not to their face but you know you laugh yeah and it just through time it kind of evolved and I think honestly the root of it is empathy like a lot Mm -hmm. of times I still get super frustrated about something but then if I'm able to pause and think about the other person in the situation or whatever it is realizing one it's not necessarily about me right that whatever happened wasn't an attack on me and accepting no one is actually thinking that much about me to it's true. to be malicious about something. And two, having this, it sounds like I'm fucking Oprah. Two, having... <laughs> you are Oprah! <laughs> yeah. No, all this like hoo-hoo, ha-ha. Having gratitude for what I have. Like, I, I, Ooh, yeah. I have... I mean, I'm I'm not rich. Uh I work and I pay bills and, you know, I never have to worry about food or anything, that sort of thing. But just I guess being empathetic about how everyone else in the world is living and realizing it's not about me and 
just that I'm happier if I don't dwell on those things. <sighs> so true. And just trying to refocus your energy elsewhere. So in a lot of ways, it's okay if you, I feel like it's okay if you tap into that anger briefly, but as long as you take yourself out of it um, and turn it around to think about the other side. Yeah. As long as you get there, it doesn't really matter how you get there, but you're totally correct because I've started doing audio diaries uh-huh. lately for Patreons. And I listen to them back and I'm like, because it's just me talking to myself. Yeah. I'm not talking to anyone. Um, and I listen to it back and I'll be, I'll be talking about like, you know, complaining about something. And then I'll immediately go, yeah, but on the other hand, like, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have this thing. So like, I'm lucky for it. Like, I'll always turn it like, I'll, it's this weird circular yeah. conversation with myself. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, I'm not admittedly where I want to be exactly. But I've come far from where I was. Exactly. And I don't think we ever get to a place where we want to be, quote, quote, anyway. Right. Um, But one thing that helped me, I guess, to be honest, it wasn't completely conscious that I kind of evolved to being more positive. But one thing that really helped me, I should send you the link to it. It was the Mm. Nerdist, which we won't get into the Chris Hardwick thing. Um, (laughs) But it was the Nerdist podcast episode with Hannah Hart. And she's she's my fave YouTuber. I love Hannah Hart. Um, And she was talking about how her slogan is practicing reckless optimism. And that doesn't mean la la, foo foo, everything is great in the world. Mm -hmm. It's that you look forward and say, I'm going to have an optimistic approach about this circumstance. I'm going to hope for the best. It doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge something bad might happen or you might not get what you want or might not have what you want. But you intentionally think, no, I'm going to think about the good in the world and what can happen in this situation that's good. Right. Ooh. And I really love that. Slogan. And you like a gr- like you just you tell yourself, I'm going to do this. Or just like you think about something and be like, yeah, that bad thing might happen, but something good might happen. Too. Something good can come out of it. Or this yeah. such a, with me, a lot of times I just laugh at things that make me angry because they just seem so ridiculous and yeah. not that my feelings about anger are ridiculous but the circumstance is ridiculous right like you get super frustrated with so for example i this week i had to close a bank account anyway <sighs> long story short they closed the wrong bank account oh my and God. i had to call in and they were and it was a joint bank account with someone so then it was like this whole thing and i just had a laugh at how ridiculous the situation was instead of getting angry at the bank or at the person who very wrongly closed the wrong account and blah 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 that's a like, big just fuck like up. what how how does this happen like it's so <laughs> ridiculous of course this happened to me kind of thing right so yeah. i just try to laugh i mean just laugh at it yeah. yeah yeah and i was at this this women in tech um forum on tuesday and people were telling some very upsetting stories about essentially how they've had very bad experiences and one of them was so bad and so ridiculous and you would never think it would happen in the realm that I work in that I did actually laugh Laugh. because it was just so ridiculous and I guess in those moments when I'm laughing I'm kind of giving up for a microscopic moment thinking like well what are we going to do if this is the world we live in seriously but then just trying to refocus on solutions and yeah remembering the good outbalances the bad even though all we see around us is like news reports and social media of bad and social media can be a whole other yeah like fucking <laughs> i'm a uh, i'm a producer of it so i shouldn't talk <laughs> you live on social media i've thought about taking you guys are talking on a recent episode about social media breaks yeah i think it's gonna happen soon do it over christmas i might although my idea of a break is like three days a weekend <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's why tough. it's tough when you make content though you can't really because so, you want to still promote your shit but at least in my case and I, I i would think in your case too it's connected to me it's my content is me so if i disappear it's going to be hard for me to i don't know maybe i can still post to the podcast stuff and, and get rid of my personal accounts but it's a little tricky it's a little but trickier. The thing is, it's not necessarily all or nothing either. Like, so the episode we're this week that we're putting out, one of the things we talked about is like micro love Ooh. and just little snippets of things. So 
you wouldn't necessarily have to quit at all. Why don't you just take a day a week that you're yeah. like this day? I'm not going to do anything from midnight till midnight the next night. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah. And that little micro transaction of only thinking about positive and not getting sucked in with the negative or Tinder right. or what, like all everything Ugh. digital. Yeah. Turn the data off your phone or whatever, right? Or just delete the apps from your phone. Or just delete that. Do yeah. that one day a week. And that might make a huge difference for your mentality too. It might. People will probably think I died. Because then you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't have that personal excuse not to project this but you don't have that personal excuse like oh i need to do this for you know my passions you don't have that excuse because it's there's no way that one seventh of a week that you're gonna miss out on sending anything out in the world because easily you can do whatever you need to send out there in the other six days of the week and get it's just true. just as much of a message out there like you're literally taking a me day yeah once a week you know thursdays or saturdays or whatever works for you if, yeah. I don't know what day you put your podcast out. Obviously not that day, right? right? But you pick a day and you turn off the phone before you go to bed the night before and you don't turn it back on. Right. That's such a good idea. And then think about like if you spent one seventh of the year not on social media, how much mentally you'd be better. I've met. Yeah. Yeah. But you're just having those little bits of self-love. Like little not- micro bro- like breaks. Yeah. They're like micro breaks. Yeah. And it's not enough time that your unresponsiveness will ever turn anyone off either. That's very true. I think you would still text and stuff, but it's just... I mean, it's up to you. Huh. Personally, for me, that's almost like saying, oh, well, I still need it. So I'm still going to do it a bit. Right. Like, I, 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 I would definitely say like I could not have the phone function of my phone just in case someone got hurt or you know there was an emergency I'd still want the phone function yeah but if there's if like if something's so important someone could call you and chat with you that's too. true yeah why aren't we calling each other anymore I feel like that the phone convo is gone like calling friends the on the phone and talking time, I'll talk to people but it's just not my thing either being talking on the phone yeah interesting and part of it too is you know if I'm on the bus or Oh, I hate that. At work or that sort of thing, I can quickly chat with my family or someone versus the phone is like, it takes all of your attention, which is kind of negative to say that, you know, you're not giving someone completely all your attention, but depends on the person, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, one concept I've started thinking about, and I, it's kind of a mix of you guys and something else I read. Um, have you heard of this concept of spoons? millennials and spoons it's kind of like going on the idea of like reserves you guys were talking about being low on certain reserves in your life like it's kind of like energy reserves this rings a bell but no let me get i'm actually gonna get my phone because i want to look it up so it's just kind of like a graphic and it says uh my friend is quote unquote running low on spoons what does that mean um your friend is running out of energy for reasons relating to a disability or health issue maybe a condition that is invisible to others and it's called a spoon theory is what it's called um, spoons represent emotional and physical energy. We start each day with a fixed number of spoons and every action uses up some of them. The more demanding the task, the more spoons it requires. I don't know why they picked spoons. Of That's all so weird. Right? I'm running low on spoons as a way to tell f- uh, friends and family that you need to postpone plans for the evening, for example. Um, it can help others appreciate when you're flagging for reasons related to sensory overload, chronic pain, or other challenges. So, so it's really just a way of saying, bitch, I'm tired. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> why don't you say, like, energy or, as we yeah. say, love? Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird way to describe it. But I've, thinking, I've been thinking about that more and more lately because I've been finding myself saying, I can't do that thing. I have plans when really my plans are to do nothing. So why do you feel compelled to don't know. to say that instead of just saying no thank you? I know, right? That's the thing. Because you're still like putting emotional effort in I it. I am. Instead of just being like, no, I'm to good. To make them feel like I can't you're do still, that thing because get, I have another thing. Get into the whole thing. thing. Like you're still putting it as a burden on yourself instead of just owning your desire not to do it. I've been doing it with Tinder guys lately though. I've been saying a lot of like I'm busy this weekend and then they'll be like what are you doing I'll be like I'm actually doing nothing that's my plan um (laughs) (laughs) I went on a little like internal rant a couple weeks ago that I need to be like the tinder expert I think you and I talked about this I'll 
critique people's tinder techniques oh interesting and their profile pictures and how they're approaching women like men or people who are attracted to women who have a tough time like give me fifty dollars and i'll give you an hour and i'll fix because some some profiles are just really bad well and two just the approach people take and the feeling that you owe them something because they want to interact with you i hate that took some issues with the podcast you had with your friend that scott we won't get into that <laughs> what, what was it i'm not a comedian i'm not in that circle <laughs> i will not get sucked into the drama cycle you know what i was reluctant to put that out well you even said or posted something along with it yeah but even that i was like no one owes you anything. I don't care. I don't owe you anything ever. I will admit that I think, just generally speaking, and it's not a gender thing, if you're going to set someone up or like arrange a date and then not show up, it is nice to hear. No. That, like, that, I don't want to go, please. And like, that's, that's males a, and females. That's being a jerk. Not yeah. showing up for a planned time for whatever the context yeah. and not letting someone know, that is being a dir- jerk. That's being just a douchey human the empathetic side of me would try to be like it's not actually about me right one like that was an attack on me one they either live in this anxiety loop that even the thought of telling someone no has crippled them and then it right blah, blah, blah. but th- it's still not okay it's still not okay but there's reasons behind it but there's reasons behind it that have yeah. nothing to do with me because the thing is like especially with online dating These are people you don't know yet. Even if you know them, you don't owe them anything. Anything. If you're not interested, you're not interested. You don't owe them. It's a courteous to say no thank you or that sort of thing. Yeah. But you don't owe them anything. It's just like applying for a job. Yeah. If you apply for a job and put your resume in. Yeah. They don't owe you 30 minutes conversation. No, not at all. No. That's just what it is. There's. Yep. Yep. And I, and I love when friends, I love when friends are honest. Like, bro- like almost like brutally honest. I like, I'm like, well, th- there's this thing going on. You want to come? They're like, no. And I'll be like, oh, but why? And they're like, I just don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> I love that right? so much. I'm like, okay. Just cut to the chase. It doesn't have to be, you know, this, you don't, she's got to take care of yourself first. You have only, I'm only, I'm going to say love. You have only so much love. Yeah in you to give or energy or whatever you want to call it and it's okay to say no to things it's total like say no to all the things but i find too we all get stuck in this cycle of saying no and then you actually feel worse in the end because if you pushed yourself to do something small would kind of you know yeah the interaction would help your mental state even if it's not necessarily what you want in the moment that's very true like you'll always hear people being like i didn't want to come out tonight but i had so much fun yeah not even necessarily about to have fun but like your brain is a muscle and you need to work it out if you're depressed and you just sit alone all the time yeah it's not getting any better oh my gosh that is so you need to push yourself to challenge yourself to have situations that make your brain work and like even if it's just talking to the people that you're really close with and comfortable with exactly like the people that are able for to hang out with you even if you're not in the best mood or even going to the grocery store and saying hi to the cashier when you buy your Michelinas like that yeah that's better mentally for you generally now I know that's not everyone but that's most people it's just like going to the gym most people hate going to the gym but when afterwards it does slowly help their physical well-being it may hurt afterwards but overall it's helping your it's the same thing with your brain your brain needs to be worked out those endorphins are good for you yeah, it's all good for you. It's all good for you. Um, your friend talks a lot about crystals, and you don't. May is so into crystals, <laughs> and you're just like you're. You, you've mentioned that you think it's placebo. It, it is a placebo. Thank you. I totally I have, agree. I have a science totally brain. Agree. However, I will say, just like anything else, just like our entire movement, if you approach something with positivity, if you approach something with that it's a tool to help you do whatever you're going to do anyway then hey i'm down whatever right if it's making you feel good do it exactly yeah if 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 buying crystals makes you feel good and not breaking your bank account keep doing that are they pricey some of them can be it depends on the rarity and all of that most of them are like three to ten dollars it's really nothing in the scheme of things but if it's a way for you to like focus your energy and like look at this tangible item yeah to 
you know, put your positivity out or remind yourself that the universe is an okay place. Yeah. That's okay with me. God damn. So I think it's just going to be an ongoing thing where she tells me about the crystal powers. I love it. And I say how it's a placebo. I actually love that duality. Well, it shows how you can coexist too, right? Like yeah. she was doing Wiccan spells when we met in high I school. I need to talk to her. Holy and shit. I'm so I fascinated. I was just giving her looks at the time like, uh-huh. <laughs> And we're still best friends. Still besties. Yeah. Um, what's it like working together on a project? It's good. I was really nervous. Uh, it's going good s- so far. But I will definitely say like a lot of things I'm doing now in my life, I couldn't have done them 10 years ago. Like I'm better at um, not it being all my way or the highway. I'm better Compromise. at yeah. compromising yeah. and trying to say if we disagree about something trying to say something in a nice way rather than a blunt way because I'm a very blunt person um but so far it's pretty good I think it's a pretty low stakes thing yeah I definitely had this in my head as like my baby and I really wanted to do it for months and then got her involved in it so um letting it evolve into something that we both see as a vision rather than like what I've built it up in my head right which could be kind of a representation of anything in your life like relationships and that too right it's not just about you it's you got to communicate between the two of you yes but she may is an awesome person and her and i have evolved from negative cynical slugs to awesome positive people kind of parallel even though we didn't do it together and it's i'm so grateful to have a friend like her and someone like her that you know, I have that long standing lifelong friendship, but we're both right. still in the same place in our lives. That's too. so fascinating that you were both like, are you able to touch on when you were in that negative space? Like what was going on? Yeah, I don't know. It just. Um, or was it just a mentality? I think it was just a mentality. And we both like changed and grew differently in different times. But it just, you kind of like take pleasure in seeing the negative. And yeah, it's really, yeah. I don't know. I, I certainly was always the type that I always liked helping people in that, but would kind of do that drug where you would like look at negative things online and it would just like feed your own beliefs about that sort of thing and yeah. have a bad outlook on th- life and people and just, I don't know, it just evolved over time. That's so interesting. Yeah. It's great on the sunny side. Come on over. <laughs> but I, I like people who have come over to the sunny side from darkness because I've been thinking about it lately and I'm like, when I get advice from people, this sounds bad, but like, I don't really want to get advice to people who've never struggled with anything. I'm like, fair. I would rather hear from the person You feel like the they don't understand. I feel like they don't understand. And mm-hmm. it's not that it doesn't make them a bad person. Yeah. Uh, it's just things have worked out for you. And that's fa- fantastic. But I want to hear from the person who's at rock bottom. Yeah. And somehow is now in a better place. Yeah. Like uh, that to me is more fascinating. And I want to know about the rock bottom. I want to know how it felt, you know? And like, I was like, and I I don't think I lost to it. I think a lot of people worry like they're going to, it's their personality to be like that. And I, yeah. I, I definitely have a little bit of that feeling that like my cynic mean side is my personality, but I don't feel like I've lost that because I am insanely empathetic and compassionate and giving until you screw me over and then yeah. I come down like a hammer. What's your star sign? I don't believe in any of that <laughs> crap. What is it though? Well, okay, you guess then. Should I guess? Because it's all bunk. Are you a Gemini? What's a Gemini? Why do you think I'm a Gemini? They're very outgoing people. They're very loyal people. Mm-hmm. I see you as a loyal person. I'm a Libra. You're a Libra? interesting i don't really i don't really know much about libras (laughs) i know a lot of gemini's and personality wise i see you in that realm but interesting so you're not into the astrology it's not that i'm not into it you don't you don't it's it's fictitious (laughs) (laughs) does may believe in it i need to talk to may you do need to talk to may um i want to hear her story (laughs) I want to hear about these Wiccan spells. I'm going to message her. We'll come back to this. 
Um, I don't. I take I, astrology with a grain of salt. Well, I do. And to me, I do. it's it's like crystals. It's a tool that if it helps you, that's great. I cringe when people spend money on it. Ooh, I was gonna ask you about um, the idea of okay, so like, I'm all about this putting positivity out Mm -hmm. to get it back I'm all about this now yeah I just personally think thinking is not enough so like there's a lot of people I know who will think the day away who will have and I'm just like these thoughts are great but you need to put them into actions you know what I mean like you need need to to, action it you need to action it yeah and so like people who just kind of sit around and wait for life to happen because a psychic told them this is your year your year is going to be this, like based on tarot cards or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel very like, that makes me feel really icky. I'm like, you need to do things to get those things yeah. to happen. I mean, thinking is very important, but you can't just think. Like, I, I have the secret. I read it. I read Ugh. it. Thank you. It's bullshit, right? Says the girl who essentially has a podcast <laughs> but, but, about positive but thinking. But the but giving. Ours is action. Yours is action. Yeah. So like, you know, if even if it's as simple as collabing on a podcast or something or like, you know, giving a shout out or giving a charity. To, like you're still doing something. Yeah. You're not just thinking. Yeah. So that's totally different. With the secret I find, it's like, yeah, I understand the idea of vision boards and I've thought about doing that. But like... If I'm just looking at the vision board all day, it ain't going to do anything. One way I would kind of like reconcile that in my brain and not get to, the secret drives me insane too. trust me. Um, yeah, it's just a little too passive for me. Is that those it's people with those outlooks probably wouldn't them taking that path to thinking about what they want probably isn't inhibiting them from doing it right if they had not encountered any sort of self-help or insight they probably would have sat with nothing and done nothing anyway right but yes i do find there is a disconnect with a certain percentage of the population that they're like thinking positively won't do anything for me and it's like you're probably right, but if you just do one selfless act in a day, and that's which self- is thinking positively, looking at yeah. the person in your work that you know you bought them lunch may make their you know whatever yeah. it is that that helps you. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So so the thinking is important as long as you are using it to change your way of thinking so that you can do things exactly and I think the, that put things out there more and the doing it I think is part of the like being selfless or giving love to someone yeah any action like that I find you have to really put your guard down big time like I made you these cookies to someone you don't know well at work or mm-hmm. I saw this scarf in my closet and I was giving it away and I thought of you you have to put your guard down and be a you have to expose yourself, which is really hard. And I yeah. think that's half of it. That, that is half of it, You're putting yeah. out there, like, I'm willing to show you me through this loving action, whatever I'm doing. Right. That so that's, that's I think, the reason people don't necessarily action it. They're yeah. scared that whatever happens won't be exactly what they thought in their head positively. 100%. Or, and it's, or it's exactly what they thought, which is Please no one make decisions based on psychics. Don't ever do that. Don't give psychics your m- money. Um, I do it once a year. That's about it. Or at least go it. To me, it's like going to the casino. Go into it knowing you're paying that dollar amount for a form of entertainment. Yeah. Not answers mm. or solutions to your life. Exactly. May oh, back to astrology. Oh my gosh. She says, hmm, not really. I never studied it. I want to read up a numerology and maybe that will be a gateway oh she gonna get into it <laughs> respond she'll probably eventually listen to this podcast i'm responding Ugh, may <laughs> gosh damn um so you you mentioned earlier about empathy mm. so are you like an empath like are you someone who can walk in a room and pick up on the energies of others well, that kind of goes or? down to like woo woo juice. Yeah. And, um, woo woo juice. I don't know. I definitely am probably more empathetic than the average person. And say I'm at a party and I see someone sitting in the corner alone, I do like feel for that person and feel bad and think, oh, I should go talk to them, even though it'll like take away from my experience if I don't 
click with them or that sort of thing. Um, but I think part of that is just, I mean, all of it is just a way to describe our feelings and it's all on a spectrum. And I definitely see and feel people's feelings, but try not to let it suck me into whatever they're feeling negative or positive. That's a good balance. Yeah. Yeah. Being aware of people's feelings and helping them if I have the spoons aka the love (laughs) to do it i I don't know why when i saw that it just stuck with me i was like why why spoons i don't like it why not just say like like i always think of it like energy tanks yeah to be honest and there's separate energy tanks battery for different areas of your life um and a lot of times if you are someone like do you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert um for most of my life i thought i was an extrovert but now I think I'm an introvert because I enjoy being social and having extroverted times, but I recharge in alone time. Interesting. Um, I feel like when, if you are someone who is a full on extrovert, people expect you to have like endless energy tanks. Mm. And so much of my life lately has just been telling people like, please don't take it personally. I just literally like can't talk to humans for a night. Like, 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 yeah. because I think even extroverts need to have that. They need to plug themselves into a wall. And two, <laughs> like, if you're depressed or whatever, yeah. I find, at least personally, I can't, for lack of other way to describe it, work on myself or reflect on myself Yeah, with tons of people around. Right. I need that alone time to do that. Oh, yeah. It's so important. And it doesn't necessarily mean for me, because I my mind is always busy. It doesn't necessarily mean like journaling or anything, but just like being around the house and cleaning and not putting on pants and, you know, having those snippets of thought to yourself in the day. Do you have a journal or do you have a day planner? No, I hate writing. I hate writing. Do you have any organizational tools that help you get your shit done? Mostly only at work. Yeah. And I have like calendars at work. Like on the computer? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I've often, I write lists. Too. I've often thought I tried bullet journaling for a hot week and I haven't lasted past a week. Um, cause I don't have, <laughs> this is dumb. I'm not a neat handwriter. So I feel myself just looking like looking at it being like, this looks gross. I don't want to even look at it. And then I was like, maybe I should just get a really good planner mm-hmm. to help me visualize my month and like what I'm doing each weekend mm-hmm. cuz as someone you yep. have side you have multiple side hustles you don't have just one you have three yeah that's a lot of scheduling and a lot of planning um, yeah. so I'm always fascinated with people who have multiple things on the go how they organize that cuz I'm still struggling with it and I, the other day I trapped at um Kohl's I was just like staring at the day planners like which one do I get I ended up just walking away and not getting any of them May bought me she's but, I, I had like lists I've lists and oh, I okay, a your list, list. Okay. of one of my side hustles with dates I need to do things in my wallet and she's just she bought me a day planner for my birthday oh god love it was her. an awesome like ho- hollow hashtag holosexuals uh day planner hollow sec- what's that mean oh you don't know what a holosexual is no tell me simply neological was that you need to get down this rabbit hole i want YouTube. to tell me all about it so there's this canadian youtuber named christine and her her channel's called simply nail logical she has exploded since i've started watching is it her. nail art well not so much anymore she's kind of like evolved okay it. but anyway so she has her like you know how they all have like their groups well her thing is hollow sexuals and as people are like almost turned on by hollow what do you mean hollow like it's very popular right now like the silver with all the colors in it it's not iridescent but it's hollow so if you move it under the light like like iridescent what are we talking about here how do i describe hollow it's that it has reflective properties that it shows the whole rainbow not okay just, so a lot of things right now are silver with like the rainbow of the reflective properties so it's kind of like prismatic yeah Okay, yes, yes, yes. So anyway. Um, Holographic. Yeah. When you were saying hollow, I was like picturing CM2 like. too deep. Got you. Um, anyway, so she bought me that and I, I don't use it. I use GCAL. Okay. Um, Google Cal. At work and I use it at home. But I just kind of mentally am always processing what I have to do in the next week or whatever to kind of try to keep track. Yeah. I don't have most of my side hustles don't require a schedule, I guess. That's good. Like, 
my weddings do and the podcast with May once a week, but her and I just kind of negotiate when we can do it. Um, the rest is just kind of as I want, right? That's so I want to know more about this other side hustle you have, yeah. which is a low Pelifax. Yeah. So um, tell uh, me all about this. This, this is, is fascinating. To not me. tied to my online persona at all but i my friend and i have a company called elope halifax <laughs> at elope halifax on social media if you want to elope contact us anyway um so i <laughs> have the ability to legally marry people i love this so much this is so cool and he is a super awesome photographer and we just got really frustrated with the whole wedding business and how everything costs so much yeah and you know there's a constant markup on everything if someone wants to get married and we worked a few weddings together that I kind of had created an elopement for people so um you know someone coming from Ontario they just wanted to elope down here and I hooked Tyler in and we had an awesome wedding in Point Pleasant or someone was coming up from Yarmouth and they just wanted to get married this year and they'll have the party next year but they still wanted to capture the moment with photography and that sort of thing so we sell one low price packages and by low price I mean you are married with a beautiful memory package of pictures for under a thousand dollars. Oh my God. That's amazing. So I think our lowest package is, um, 700. And if it's more than that, say I quoted this podcast and we'll do it for 700, (laughs) but you get your JP. We go somewhere with you. You have your wedding. You can still bring people. We call it a low Palifax, but a lot of people still bring like 10 people. It can be like a small wedding, a small wedding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we describe our business as elopement and small weddings. And yeah. we hold the wedding for you. You have beautiful pictures afterwards. And you're married because the whole point of being married is committing to your partner for the rest of your life, not necessarily having this giant party that'll burden you with costs and yep. emotional obligations to your family and all of that. Yep. Nailed it. Nailed it. So if yes. what you want is to be committed to your partner for your life, you don't have to have this giant party with garter belts and bouquets and you know inviting all your aunts and uncles you never see anymore you can just go bring the people you truly want to be there and then go out to have a nice dinner with them after or brunch or whatever some people get married in the morning and then they have the whole day to spend with their families or whatever right that's amazing yeah so do you help them with venue pick out and stuff like that or most kind of most of the year people choose just to do a park because a lot of parks we mm. can just do for free in Halifax. Just go. Yeah. The one exception is the uh, public gardens. You cannot. That place is bonkers all the time. But uh, you can do Point Pleasant. I mean, I've done surprise wedding in Shuby where I've hooked up with a couple and then they told the whole family they hired a photographer for fall pictures with everyone and then the bride showed up in a dress. Oh. And the whole family was delighted. I love that shit. And it's not the pressure of everyone, f- decorations and all of that. It's just... We've been together forever. We've decided to get married. We're going to do this. We don't want any of you to stress. So there was probably like 25 family members there. Holy Um, crap. That's amazing. They did actually even call the grandparents in Newfoundland on that wedding. And the grandparents secretly flew in. So, you know, it was all the great parts of the wedding. Everybody gets to see each other. Everybody gets to catch up and have that positive moment. But with none of the stress. With none of the, and the financial Strain. And none of the financial burden, too. My God. You pay us once. You do have to go buy your license. We're not allowed to buy that for you. But you pay us one fee. We show up. We do it as small or as big as you want to. So when... So, okay. Justice of Peace. When did you get legally... Is it called ordained? Is that the right word? No, ordained, ordained? would be religious. So swore in, probably. Sworn in. When did that happen? So I've been... I've been a Justice of Peace for a couple years. Yep. And I had to think about it. And you have to swear an oath to a judge. And I've been doing weddings ever since. A, a lot of them happen between spring and October-ish. Holy crap. Because that's wedding season. Yeah, big time. But I had been always kind of positioning myself at the lower end of size and pressure weddings. So I, use, I usually do small casual weddings rather than large productions because the productions usually stress the couple out so heavily that they're not even enjoying their day and I want to have a connection with the couple and help them enjoy those few moments where they're actively committing themselves to each other for the rest of their lives that's one thing I want to ask you about what's the process so do you do you 
meet them before? Do you talk with them? Like, how do you get to know the couple? So it really depends couple to couple. The bare minimum, you're supposed to meet them at least three days in advance and ensure that they have the best intentions of blah, blah, blah. Usually what happens with me is I've been communicating with them for, you know, a back and forth, what they're looking for, what I can offer, that sort of thing. Then I'll meet with the couple just casually for a coffee or that sort of thing and make sure I'm a good fit for them because there has been a couple weddings where I've thought... I'm they don't want me to do this wedding kind of oh thing, right? really you just like you just sense like that they're not well just that it. what my style like I'm a very easygoing person and oh, that sounds bad <laughs> I'm a very casual person and they want more formality right. and that sort of thing versus I want it to flow very yeah. casual and be a certain yeah. way which is um which in my opinion is way better at a wedding it, it all depends on what you want right people, it does, yeah. people do have um the dream that it's you know like very proper and I'm not a proper person um meet with them then I write them a script um we go back and forth on the script if they want changes so it's kind of like a custom it's I fully customize everything for every couple that is so cool so there's a few legal statements you have to say within it but I try to like pepper them in because they're not romantic at all it's like I name like they're it's crazy um and like if you go by joe your whole life well if your first name is actual samuel like you have to say samuel Samuel. because it's the legality it's the legality side of it um but like fully customize the script for the couple uh and then usually we meet beforehand to fill out most of the wedding paperwork so then that day when you're done you just sign 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 it's not like trying to figure out because it asks some weird questions like where was your mother and father born what was their names at birth so instead of, I, I, I would instead hate of to get up there the, at the altar and be like, uh, yeah. mom, Where? <laughs> like, like I don't, you don't know the answer. I don't think my approach is necessarily <laughs> unique compared to other justice of the pieces, but, right. um, so do that ahead of time, get that out of the way. And then the day of we usually meet up since a lot of them are casual, the bride and groom come together. It's not a big reveal or anything, Love you know, that. They show up sometimes in a white dress, sometimes both are in suits, sometimes no one's in a suit. It just really depends on the couple, what they want to do. So cool. Um, And then do the wedding. Wedding takes usually five minutes. Holy crap, so quick. You can do it in 90 seconds if you want, but I usually fluff it out to, okay, well, let's do some vows and stuff since we're here anyway kind of thing. Um, Sign, 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 and then they're done. And then Tyler usually, who's my photographer partner, usually spends an hour, an hour and a half, depending on the situation, taking pictures of them, whatever they want a picture of. Some couples want an elopement announcement. So they'll bring a sign that says like we eloped or we can help people find a sign to do that. So then that way, if they want to just blanket post it on social media and hope everyone sees it kind of thing, um, they can have a nice professional picture. And at least that picture, like we could have a day turnaround on it and then they get their pictures for the next few weeks. I love the idea of... Oh, hey, we're married. I love that. I love that idea. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, we're engaged. And then, like, you know, it's a whole two-year thing of, like, we're going to get married. And it's just, like, when you bitches getting married? It's a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of money. Yeah. And actually, a lot of couples will say to us, oh, we're actually planning on, you know, having a big party next year or whatever. But they just want to be married. They want that moment for them. God, I love that. Does yeah. any wedding stick out to you as, like, your favorite? Or like one that like was particularly. They're all really unique. Uh, one, I didn't do this one with Tyler, but I had a couple essentially through a friend. I found them. They found me, I guess, on Reddit. And it was a cool. Cu- it was a couple from Germany and they wanted to come over and do a really nice wedding at Peggy's Cove. Oh, I love it. So anyway, I went through the process. And yes, legally right now you can get married at Peggy's Cove. Because a lot of these small weddings, as long as you're not like preventing other people from using the space, it's completely right. just and public, as long as you're okay with tourists use. being everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it actually yeah. ended up being a foggy day, which is really cool. And they came over. They didn't even have anyone to witness. So I had a friend because I can provide witnesses for a fee. So I had they had one witness in the photographer and then my friend was the other witness. Um, so did the wedding. They were awesome. We went out to dinner with them because they were like, please come to dinner. We're on vacation Aww. alone the whole time. Come. We had an awesome dinner with them out there at uh, Rhubarb or whatever the place was. 
it was it was really neat oh and they were the type like no please keep our contact if you're ever in germany I, we're not just saying this please come come that's so cool us. it's like you're making friends you're making, making straight up friends? micro friends Aww. spreading the love so i love that what are your personal views on marriage like do you ever want to get married or i would get married i'm not married i never have been um it just to me i don't think everyone has to get married oh no, yeah but I think it should be an option for everybody if they want to do that, w- even if it's just an informal, non-legal, you know, public declaration for people. Yeah. yeah. It's it's all, to me, it's up to the two people getting married. Like, yeah. What they it really, want. really is. Yeah. 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 And I mean, like, I like this idea of smaller weddings. I think that they're so much more special. I think we're in an arms race where we have so much access to media and exposure to how big things can be and how they should be that it's become this arms race of bigger and better and best instead of let's really look at what we want to do with our money and our time and what would be really great for us and our close family and friends or whoever we want to attend there and like really at the end of the day a wedding is for the couple it should be often it is not and unfortunately it's become this big thing where it's about all these other people and you're so worried about pleasing all these other people that you're not going to enjoy it. But that being said, that doesn't mean I don't get sucked into say yes to the breast cl- say yes to the <laughs> say yes, yes to, to the, the breast. breast. <laughs> say yes to the dress clips on YouTube sometimes. Ooh, I lo- yeah, I used that to watch clip that show. Date, a lot. Oh my god, it's so What are your like go-to guilty pleasures right now make- to make you feel to cheer you up? <sighs> I don't know, man. <laughs> what you been watching? I just rewatched Sex in the City, which I don't endorse I, for anyone. I was wanting to rewatch it. Don't bother. Is it terrible? They're all terrible people. Yeah. Actually, no, I correction. Samantha, lovely lady. I saw a BuzzFeed article that was like talking about how terrible they all are. And then they were like, Miranda's the best one. And I was like, no, she isn't. I think they're all pretty bad in their own ways. They, I mean, th- we're all damaged, but <laughs> they're all generally fairly damaged people and i mean you're similar ish age to me they were all so idolized and those were not those those stories showed struggle and trying to grow not something people should idolize that's so true and materialism and all of that i i i the reason i wanted to rewatch it was because i wanted to see if i related to it more in my 30s. Yeah, hopefully you don't. <laughs> then I did in, I don't know what age I was when I when I watched it. I mean, I'm 31. Late teens. Probably late, like. 20s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I wouldn't have related as much back then, I don't think. Ugh, maybe. I, I was never deep into it even back then. I would watch if it was on, and I still had remembered what the end of the show was and everything, but. Yeah. They're just not. Oh, I forget the end. I won't say it. <laughs> I forget what happens at the end. There's is it something about New York and New York is my... No, just like Carrie's or, plot line. Yeah, okay. Um, Tell me when the mics are off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're just not good people. They really yeah. aren't. Like yeah. Carrie, her boyfriend has a house in the country and she's acting like it's the end of the world to go 45 minutes outside New York City. Yeah, very like, snobby. Even if it's not your thing, that how how do you expect to be in a relationship if you can't give one weekend to what your spouse wants to do? Yeah. It's that's... not like you're standing up to your hips in swamp water. It was a cabin <laughs> and you were reading magazines and there was cell reception. <laughs> it's so true. Fuck. Maybe I should avoid the the rewatch. <laughs> it might it might make me hate it more. <laughs> hate watch. I mean, like um, I I never loved it. Yeah, no, either did I. I was never like someone who was crazy about the show. And I I asked my sister in law about it because she had all the DVDs. That's how I'd watched it years ago. And she was like, "Yeah, I know." And yeah. it made me feel better that someone else felt that way. That's but true. I don't know if I necessarily I haven't been consuming a lot of media other than just casual YouTube watching. So much YouTube. And how YouTube channel going good I loved your recent video thanks I hadn't put that one out in like hilarious. a month but um it was good yeah I loved it 
we'll see. I haven't got a lot of views on it, but I thought it was hilarious. So that's yeah. all that matters. Hiding the dick in the painting. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. My signature move. <laughs> dick in all my art. Do you have people helping you with your videos? No. Is it literally just you? Yeah. Holy shit. I mean, who I mean, <laughs> would help me? <laughs> it's true. I, I say this, but like for the most part, I, I do things on I, my own I too. will admit someone helped me with the title. So uh, I'm I in like a, you, a chat with a bunch of people on about a certain YouTube channel. And I was like, I need help with this title. And an awesome guy who he he's actually a writer. He gave me the Bob Frosting. Cause I love that so much. Since it's Bob Ross out of Frosting. So I would I didn't think of that. That was awesome. But yeah, no, I do all the work. And that's sometimes what takes so long. <sighs> but. People, people don't realize when they watch things just how much goes into it. That that was a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot probably of stuff 20, you have to set up. And that was then. probably like 20 hours and it's a six minute video. Do you find it weird filming alone sometimes? Like, like I find personally, I, I've thought about doing, I've been in times this weekend in particular, which by the way, thanks for agreeing to come on this weekend. Because <laughs> I was like, I put a call on Instagram, just like, everyone, I'm depressed. My motivation is terrible. I'm not you doing really great. sold it. I'm not doing great <laughs> at reaching out to guests. Please, if you want to come on, for the love of God, message me. And then you were like, I'm in. And I was like, thank you. You, you really sold it. I'm terrible right now. Please come join I was my just being terrible. honest. Because sometimes it's hard to get guests. I think it's, uh, you're, you're going to, you're lucky with your show because you got a consistent co-host that you can talk to. Yeah. It's tough sometimes when you have to call on friends. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't want them to feel like this is like like a, a bother to them to come on. Yeah. I want anyone to co- who wants to come on to be stoked to come on. Um, and and so I, it's I, this weird I, thing. I have that pressure sometimes too, for sure. Um, I will say there's a couple people that if I call on them, I know they'll do it, even if they don't yeah. necessarily want to. Yeah. But, but my business partner in a little Palfax, Tyler, um, he is actually... He is, I call him my ringer. Amazing. Like if I don't think something is perfect, if I bring him on, he will always make it funny. Aww, and he great. generally seems to enjoy doing it and is enthused about doing it with me too. Yeah. But yeah, it is tough because a lot of my, I'd say for the first year I didn't do alone episodes because I just thought I need someone to play off to make this. That's, that's what I'm, yeah. Which is somewhat true, but just found a bit of a, bit more goofy niche I guess to do it alone which is weird because when I watch your videos like you are so lively and entertaining that I often think there is someone behind the camera even though there isn't I'm probably more lively since there isn't someone because I'm not worried about what that person's Person's thinking thinking. (laughs) I never thought of that that's a good idea I wish I did that is the one part of the process I wish I had someone filming for me I don't mind like I don't mind being in front of camera I don't mind editing I actually like editing the best yeah and I don't mind thinking up ideas but I wish I did have someone come in who like minded the camera make sure it is in focus yeah moved it around for shots and that's just kind of, of monitoring yeah and just sure had an eye good. for shots and yeah stuff too. I think that that's so and it's it's cool when you do have like you have your your friend Tyler like when you do have these people that you can call on because they don't just become guests they become like part of the team in a weird way yeah he's super supportive yeah, like part of the and team. I mean like we're business partners in another venture now so that's so cool yeah Jeez, you're doing so much I know I do too much how you stay insane I Jeez don't. Louise. I sleep eight hours a night and eat healthy. Are you ever going to take a long vacation and a break from everything? Um. So I didn't. I've only shot since May. I've probably only shot three videos. Okay. But that was because I was going through a lot of life changes and stuff too. Um, right. Check out my most recent video about making a Bob Ross if you're curious about my personal life I, uh, I actually have a thousand questions but I wasn't sure if you wanted to get into it I mean I don't want to get too deep into it but I was in a I was not married but I essentially had to get divorced we were together nine years and you have to go through a legal process and that sort of thing wait 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 yeah, there's all these people are like oh I don't want to get married because I don't want to get divorced yeah you still have to get divorced it's just a, it's not the it's just not a divorce it's were a you separation with this person oh yeah we own the home together I never knew this. Yeah. What? Yeah, we were together like nine years. Okay, that's and, a long time. Um, we owned our house together for six years. Oh my god! So we had like shared assets and. But you've been since I've known you. You've lived in the apartment, right? 
I still in my house. You're still in the house. That's, You're not in an apartment. That YouTube set, I built a YouTube set in my basement. Holy shit! Balls. That was so. Okay, I have. That was part of the past six months. So uh, well, I renovated. There was cupboards there, and I. When did this it. breakup happen? Uh, April, and then he moved out in June. Holy shit! Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> I thought you knew. I mean, I, I I didn't know it was that recent. Yeah, like he might have still been living with me when I came and shot the other episode of it with you. I can't remember. Did that end on bad terms or good terms? Um, I would say that ended as best as it ever could. Right. We were both super mature, um, super empathetic. Yeah. Or as empathetic as I could try to be. And I found he was very caring and empathetic. I, w- I don't want to get into the Specifics. what happened. Right, right, right. Um, but honestly, it people just need to set aside their... I'm not saying this about him. I'm saying that he and I did this well. Um, right. You just need to set aside your own whatever and have that one last thing where you work as a team and get it sorted out and just do it and we just did it as affordably as possible we went to one lawyer and a lawyer can't technically advise you if you go together but you go to the lawyer and get the paperwork done and you know we he and i just sat down a few sessions and decided everything's ourselves and you know what was fair between the two of us and then we paid a little bit of money to a lawyer to write it up so you weren't actually married no but but you still had to get divorced like common Divorce law quick. yeah okay got you got yeah. you got you so like assets you, you have, and stuff like that exactly got you got you got you oh my gosh and technically in canada i believe as soon as you live together you're considered common law so these people are like oh i don't want to split my money if i get married and that if you're living together they already have a claim on it interesting it doesn't mean that you're forced to end the situation but but it could go there it could go there but when for example when we bought our house we had already sat down and head on paper um, if this goes south and not that we ever thought it would, but just that's essentially like a prenup about the house. Oh, cause it is a house. Yeah. You're very correct in that. Who, who put thing. in what money and how to sort it out and that sort of thing. God damn. Friggin logistics. And you have to deal with these logistics while you're dealing with like all this emotional stuff. Yeah. It takes a long time cause it really is like, okay. The, with everything that happening, like the way I described it to people who are outside the situation was, you know, everything in my life is super happy and this thing is not happy. So now I need to put the work into this. You need to put the work to get rid of that. And, um, you know, when your life is no longer what you thought it's going to be, <sighs> but now you have this opportunity on the positive side and the love side of choosing whatever you do with your life with yeah. a clear head that you never had the opportunity to do. Not that you didn't, but, you know, things are changing. And if they're changing, choose the path you want. Did you learn a lot about what you might want in a partner going forward? Um, Or even if you want one. So maybe you don't I, want honestly, one. Honestly, like, I, I, I am very content and happy alone. I would. I've been thinking about this lately. I want to do an episode all about being alone. Like, all about the idea of being happy alone. Because that's something I struggle with, yeah, obviously. And, and I, I, I... Probably like 30% of my struggle is about the what should you do rather than what you want to do. Right. Um, I think it was something that evolved all through time. It wasn't necessarily just, oh, now that we've broken up and my life has drastically changed. What do I want now? It's something that, you know, evolves over time as you get older too, right? Are you looking to date? Not right now. Yeah, fair. That's totally fair. Um, Just critique other people's profiles. Don't be yeah, <laughs> right? So I uh, I have committed myself to a f- things working on myself for the next couple months at least, which was like the plan that I would consider it in 2019. But I'm in no rush. That's good. Yeah. Don't put the pressure on yourself. I'm happy. You got a lot going on too. You're busy. I, I, that is part of it. Like, <laughs> You're so I know busy. you need to make time. I'm like, when when would I even go out to dinner with someone? I've I've been thinking about this so much recently about just the idea of like, you know, I've been alone for six years and it's like, fuck yeah, I do want that intimacy, but the thought of how to work another human 
into my now life that I've established. Let alone the compromise and energy it takes to be a good partner. Yeah. To, like, what am I willing to give to compromise in my life right now? And I'm, I don't want to put that on other people. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and it would be hard to find somebody who, like, it, it would be hard to find someone who's, like, okay with every facet. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, this is what I have going. I'm not going to change this for anyone. So you, you're either okay with it or you're not. And I, I, I'm definitely open to change a lot of things like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, a few things, like, I, what I like spending my time on yeah. isn't... That's exactly it. Yeah, the time. isn't necessarily a couple's activity, and also like lifestyle too. I feel yeah, like especially where I mean, depending on how long you've been alone. But like for me, it's like six years, so it's like a long time. It's going to be a huge adjustment for me if I was ever in a relationship. Huge, huge. And so whoever whoever I choose to enter that with needs to be patient. Yeah, and that's something that like I don't often communicate that well with people or with men, like. But it's just kind of like, you're just going to have to realize that, like, this is so new to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to have it six years ago, but that was six years ago. That's a long time. You're a different person now. I'm a different person now. Everybody's a different person now in their 20s to their 30s. I'm not used to working in a, like, you know, I work friends into my life, but Mm -hmm. friends are not the same as a romantic partner. No. Like, there's not near the amount of, I guess work i don't want to say work but you know what i mean well also communication i think communication yeah i i think that i'm a fairly good communicator as the years going on like what i want and need and especially with newer people like oh i don't want to do that or i love i need this or that sort of thing yeah and that i i wouldn't be tolerant of someone who just flips around and and gets upset but doesn't talk about it or you know what i mean playing some sort of game i'm not into it yeah you want to go out to dinner great send me a dm <laughs> thank you yes but other than that like i'm good in my life i probably like yeah. a travel buddy but the past couple trips i've traveled alone and uh, it's been awesome and I then i love to take a trip by myself it's actually lovely you wouldn't have to like like bend to anyone else you do what at and, all. admittedly so i usually travel a lot with my friend mugsy um Muggsy. and she is awesome to travel with because we are really good at firstly she'll just do anything she she's so optimistic and excited about anything she'll just do whatever I want most of the time anyway love that but secondly not taking offense if you don't want to do the exact same thing 24 7 yep yep it's okay to go on a trip with someone and spend the afternoon apart I I experienced that on both my tri- trips to Mexico going with friends and being like I'm gonna go explore the runes you guys can hang by the pool if you want but like I'm going yeah <laughs> see see you later tonight you know like I'll, yeah. I'll meet, meet up with you later tonight. but like yeah it's if you want to do something try to figure out a way to do it you don't have to so I wouldn't want to ruin people. that because my one yeah. major travel buddy her and I travel so well together oh I and travel. then and or I'll just travel alone because I go to Disney a lot because I'm a weirdo I saw that there's yeah. a lot of pics from Disney you well, I mean, Disney. I take a lot and then kind of feed them out of my feet, but... Um, I, the, <laughs> which I always wondered. I was like, is she going all the time or are these just old pictures? <laughs> Immediately, I wouldn't go a lot, but my parents live 20 minutes from Disney. Oh, holy shit. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, that's convenient. So that's easy. And then I was out west for um, a conference for work and I was like, yeah, I'll pop over to Disney because I'd never been to that Disney before. The Disneyland. Disneyland. Yeah. Which one do you like better? probably world yeah that's what everyone says but it's what i grew up with right my parents live there i went there when i was a kid even when my parents didn't live in the states so yeah i would love to go as an adult i the only time i went was grade five it's bomb my ex is does not like really any of the things i liked and even he (laughs) was like this is great like he's he's not into any of that stuff and i took him he's like yeah this i I, I had fun. This was great. It's the happiest place Even on without Earth. kids, it's really fun. Yeah. You can drink there too, apparently. You can. I don't, but you do. you <laughs> But can. you have the option. There's a lot of food. A lot of the food's crap, but then they have a lot of good food too, depending on like how Where much you, you want to pay. Apparently it's um, really pricey, eh? The food there. Yeah. Depending again what you buy. Yeah. I eat kids meal and it's enough food. There you go. Like. Yeah. It's it's you know 800 calories it's enough food to get you to your next meal that's very true and like overeating is an issue like i feel yeah. like there's no need to overeat no even though it's tempting sometimes yeah 
Gosh, damn. So we're at, yeah, we're almost at an hour 40. So we'll wrap her up. Say, wow. Yeah. We'll wrap her. Thank you. Like, so much for coming on no problem it's kind getting of last dark. minute and to go home. <laughs> obviously you need to get your ass home <laughs> on my scooter i would love to have if there's ever a situation where may is in halifax yeah we can hook you up i, I would love to have i actually tried to get her to come today on. because she was in uh, moncton yesterday i was like oh you can just keep coming yeah um but you guys can totally do it digitally too i'll tell you what we do i i would love to talk to her mm-hmm. i i would love to hear her story too um i think it's so great what you're doing and it's so inspiring that you're doing so many things like you have so many different side hustles and you're working full time and you're just killing it and i i look up to you in a weird oh, way thank you so there you go now i can't look you in the eye <laughs> <laughs> not in a negative way but just like i can't take praise oh, no i think thank you i think you're killing it and you know obviously this episode we talked about seasonal depression we're all not perfect we all deal with challenges but i think if you surround yourself with people doing similar things and or just positive people and yeah. i know that's so cliche to say but you know what so if all true. your friends are negative follow me on instagram and dm me i'll talk to you i was gonna say that like i'm in uh sorry for listening to anyone in this group chat but i'm in a group chat with like three of my close close friends and it is a cesspool of negativity and by that i mean <laughs> it is it is all we do all day is complain about our jobs yeah. and listen the complaints are valid I'm not saying they're not, but I, as much as I do get negative, need to mute it all the time because I just can't. Yeah. And I'm in a I group can't chat. I can't deal with it. A four person group chat with awesome ladies. Shout out main girl gang. Long story. Um, and it's all positive. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> it's called main M-A-I-N-E, like the place, girl gang. Anyway. I um, love it. It's all positive. Oh, really? And it's a. I mean, you know, you gripe sometimes. It's not like, oh, no complaints allowed. Yeah. But it's all positive. It makes a huge difference in your day when when you're going to talk to people. There's a source of support rather than a source of yeah down. But you guys should start a second group and you have your gripe group and then your upside group. We sh- With the same people? With the same people. So then That'd that, be interesting. That way you're not like policing that people can't complain. Friggin' group chats. Like the dynamics in group chats are fascinating to me. That's the only group chat I'm in, literally. Oh, really? I'm in a bunch of them. I got when I got divorced, I lost the group chat. So you lost the girl. It's okay. Freaking. I can talk to those people one on one if I need to talk to them, which I do. But you're in the house alone now, too, right? No, I have two roommates. Oh, right. You have two roommates. Gotta pay the bills. So it was a three bedroom. Yeah, it's three bedroom. <laughs> that's amazing. That's. I, it's weird. I had someone tell me recently, they're like, because I've been talking about like the depression thing, and they're like, you live alone, so that must not help. And I was like, you know, that's extremely, true. extremely true. If I had a true. roommate like that, that I could just chit chat with, yeah, yeah, I would probably be in, maybe I should just get a roommate again. I'm 31. Maybe I should just go back to it. Yeah, I'm 35 and I have two roommates, so you know. I just thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was done with them, to be honest. Yeah. Like I've lived alone for almost two years, but I, I was just kind of like. I to live alone. I was like. I like this. This is a decently priced apartment. But if I had a roommate, I could get a nicer, bigger apartment and have company every day. Or you could just have money in your life. Money. Because that's my motivator is money. I, I could live alone still and not have any money. Ugh. Or I could look at it as a part time job interacting with people. Yeah. And then I pay off my debt. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I'm, I'm hardcore thinking about it. 2019 is around the corner and um, girl got to pay down those credit cards. So yeah. <laughs> could just start doing like bake sales or something. <laughs> you find other ways to make I don't know. This is, this is like looping back to giving the charity for Christmas. Yeah. The human front fund from Seinfeld. You just start having bake sales for like. <laughs> the helping fund and you just give this generic description and people give you money oh i love that there's this site called book cameo that like non like kind of i'm de- well, well aware of do it. you know book cameo yes so fascinating to me to see like what certain people are charging for like their little video shout outs i know i'm like i was tempted to put myself on there just you should just no one's gonna book it but just to like send it to family and friends and be like if you want to book a cameo, <laughs> <laughs> get a personalized video message from this person that you already know 
in your life that should be talking to you anyway. Unfamous YouTuber, if you want a cameo, cameo, pay $5. Oh my gosh. Oh my. It's a genius Do you ever get negative, just quick question before we wrap it up. Do you ever get negative comments on your YouTube videos? Oh, totally. What, like, what are they, are they mean? Uh, yeah. Um, most of them I just block the people. Good. Um, a lot of them are dumb bitch. Oh my god! Because you know I'm obviously you're so stupid, so un- unintelligent. If I have a different opinion about a Kit Kat bar than you, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, people suck. And a lot of times, people now I look. I'm super sensitive to this in real life, mm-hmm. but people have perceived slights over. They call me racist, basically. What the hell? Why? You've watched my videos. Where does that come out? So at? if I don't like a snack or don't eat it in the way they think it should be eaten, I'm insensitive racist. What the hell? Listeners, please go watch a sampling of my videos. And yeah. Holy sh... People are ridiculous. That's and look, insane. I'm super culturally that's, sensitive. That's and insane. I... When I am filming, I am conscious not to say anything like, of course, and not to appropriate culture and everything. But if I'm, it's, for example, like I eat a lot of Japanese Kit Kats. If I don't like the taste of the Japanese Kit Kat, it's okay to be it's like, still food that you're this eating. This tastes gross. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. That's not being cult. And it's never, um, I'll say from my perception and seeing profiles and that it's never of someone from, you know, the country that I'm trying the food of. It's always someone. It's just someone looking for a fight. Oh, my God. And not to be negative, feminist. Yeah, yeah. But I'm quite confident that it happens more to me than and it is always a male. Commenting. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so well, and remember that, love. <laughs> that's so wild to me because even just like watching your videos, there's not even the slightest I've never even had the slightest tinge of like no. ooh. Never. No, that's never. It's lighthearted, fun exposure to food. Holy crap. Or maybe painting but Bob Ross with frosting. frosting. <laughs> I really wanted frosting after I watched your episode. Yeah. Like you should have been sponsored by. I ate a Betty lot Crocker. of frosting. Fuck, it's so good. I've recently been doing frosting with animal crackers, like dipping them. Yeah, you mean homemade Dunkaroos? Hell, fucking yes. yeah. So good. But thanks again, Moxie. No problem. Everybody, follow, subscribe. Sure. Subscribe on wherever you find podcasts. To is the the name of the podcast is we. So we started a cult. So we started a cult. You can find that But it's everywhere. not a cult. No. It's a spiritual movement. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and I I would like to join. <laughs> so long as you'll have me. Absolutely. Um, and you can follow them as well on Instagram at Euphorlytic, right? E-U-P-H-O-R-A-L-Y-T-I-C. Yeah. That's a that's I I would, would not have even attempted to spell that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll I'll link. Click the link below to follow them and thanks again for coming on thanks for having me and you get to do a bell ring make it a good one ring that bell oh i mean you can do that there you go all right hey lily Oh, hey, Krista. Did you know, according to an unproven internet meme, you will cross paths with a murderer 36 times in your lifetime? I did know that, and you want to know why? I can guess. Because we're 36 times, a Canadian true crime and comedy podcast, which covers crimes in the Great White North. Every episode, we focus on a major crime, and then we lighten things up with a kooky one. We cover everything from major cases and unsolved mysteries to peculiar getaway choices and animals behaving oddly. So catch our bi-weekly episodes on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts.